So now fourth and 11. We'll see just how good that upper Marion field position will be. Two men back deep for the kick. And Ian Hammer is the Norristown punter. It's a very low snap. Picks it up off the turf. Lucky there wasn't much of any kind of rush coming. And it's fielded at about the 25. A big hit on special teams. And that's number 50. And that is Brian Schwartz on the big hit. I don't like what I'm seeing so far from this Norristown area high school football team. It has not been consistent, and I understand that when your quarterback goes down, it is a huge blow. However, there's no excuse for some of this stuff, and that snap coming back was not good. Ian Hammer could have very easily have been blocked on that punt, and it was only because, as you said, there was no rush that that didn't happen. So here is Fantavong and the rest of the UM offense. It'll hand it off to Panici, and they swallow him up at the line. Several Eagles in on the stop. Whiteley and Kelajor, big hits on that one. Josh Whiteley has been a really solid addition to this Norristown area defensive line. And Sel, uh, Sam Kelajor, I mean, what can you say? He's just been great. He's been Mr. Everything for that defense, along with his counterpart, Mike Good, both doing a really solid job. So Larry Smith at defensive end, Curtis Haley and Whiteley at tackle, and number 82, C.J. Douglas, comprised that Norristown defensive line with a solid set of linebackers. It looks like it's on the defense tonight. Fantavong in the shotgun once again, takes it, drops back, throws down the field, and it's caught. No, now it's dropped. The Eagles will dive on it, and the referee says incomplete. He did not ever gain control, so Anthony Donolfi on the coverage nearly got beat but was able to strip it out at the last moment. A great play, and if he hadn't stripped that out, that he would have looked really bad, but he did it. He got beat, but then really made up for it in a big way with great coverage. So we've already seen a couple of passes down the field by both sides, and uh, after the Eagles opened the game with run after run after run. Fantavong's release is somewhat unconventional, reminiscent of the old uh, under, underhand pitcher uh, Dan Quisenberry from Australia, the old thunder from down under. Fantavong takes a snap from the shotgun once again, being rushed, and now it's caught by Bridge, but he's gonna go backwards, so that play doesn't work as the Eagles defense too quick for it. That was that play was literally, that was incomprehensible. We're sitting here watching it, and I'm just, that's a train wreck. Um, a very bad decision to try to move east to west on the Norristown area high school Eagles. What you have to do is go north to south. If you're not running straight ahead, you're going to be crushed by their speed. It's just dumb. Aesthetic weakness, to be sure. So Bridge loses quite a few there. And speaking of Dexter Bridge, he'll punt it away here. Milo Hill back deep to return the punt. Bridge gets it away. It's a nice kick. Milo Hill back to his own 30 to field it. And now he's at the 40, out to midfield and brought down right there by number 57, Joe Coza. Nice run back by Milo Hill there. Milo Hill's been a nice surprise for the Eagles. He's an 11th grader, and he's just been, he's very athletic. He's been doing a good job, and the Eagles fans can breathe a sigh of relief because look who's back. James Ramsey enters the huddle and will talk it over with his inside the Eagles huddle. And this is nothing to take away from anything from Shannon Mayer, but he's a freshman, and it's very difficult for him to be able to, to get this, his varsity feet wet so soon, especially in homecoming. His time's definitely going to come. He's going to be a good one someday. And uh, here is Roby getting a short pass from Ramsey. Now reverses his direction, makes another man miss. Now he goes up the field, and... Now he's got guys on his back, but he's still going. Wow, and he ends up with a, gaining the first down and some. And Wow, Anthony Roby looked to be swallowed up, made a couple guys miss, then finished to the run. Roby looked amazing on that play, and a play that you know that I hate. And we've talked about it again and again and again. I mean, I just think, ban it. But when you get a play like that and when you get that kind of athleticism, that's phenomenal. And uh, it really was great running. He ran about 30 yards there in order to um, gain 12, but still, great play by Roby did that all by himself too. That's just a great agility, great speed. So here's Ramsey under center. Has only good as a wide receiver. First and 10. He'll drop back to throw. 
and he's wrestled down at the line. Looked like it may have been an option as he had Mayer running with him. That's what happens a lot of times when you run the option to the short side. If, the, if your game's built on speed and you're not giving your players the, the long side of the field, you're not giving them the, um, the wide side, it's difficult for them to be able to break it open. So you had Ramsey and uh, Mayer and Kelajor all there, but not able to exploit their speed. Roby back on the field and uh, now under two minutes to go in the first quarter. 0-0 zero, zero game here early. And it's second and 12 for the Eagles offense who have the ball five yards past midfield. Here's that shotgun again. And they'll use Mayer as a wide receiver as they do from time to time. Rolling out is Ramsey, throws as he's hit and Roby was tightly covered and couldn't haul in a tough catch. Ramsey couldn't get everything into that one because Ramsey was being hit as he threw it and he stepped into the hit instead of stepping back. He's got speed to elude that, but he's got to use it. He can't step up and step into the hit. He's got to avoid it so that he can get a more accurate throw off. Are, are you surprised at the amount of passing we've seen thus far, especially after that first drive when they ran the ball eight or ten straight times? I'm very surprised to see how much they're allowing James Ramsey to pass here. I'm very surprised, especially considering that Ramsey had that brief uh, that little stint with an injury, which we still have gotten no resolution on. We don't know how he's doing. And even though this first quarter has been fast and it's been going, 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 there's been a lot more passing here tonight than I expected to see in the first quarter from Coach E.J. Smith. We'll see now if he opens it up and goes deep. He's been doing a lot of the short and mid-range passes. We'll see if he allows Ramsey to go downfield to Roby or Mayer. I believe this is Shannon Mayer now back in the game on third down. So Ramsey unable to go, at least for now. Here's Mayer. Drops back, has a man in his face, avoids him, dancing around in the pocket, and he avoided the first guy. But you knew that dancing around in the pocket like that wasn't going to last too long. That's a loss of about seven. You got to know when to hold him and know when to fold him, and that was not good. That was not, that was not solid play there. The, the offensive line clearly broke down. The offensive line breaks down, and when that happens, a young quarterback is going to have trouble. And that's what, just what happened there with fourth and 28. James Ramsey's headed to the locker room. He is off the field, and Ian Hammer boots away a nice-looking kick. It's fielded by number 22. And he finds a hole, and he's finally brought down and finishes it with a good return to about the 40. Denalfi had a beat on him, but that was a great block by Upper Murray in there in order to spring the runner. And uh, Narstans has not looked sharp and has not looked focused. Half a minute to go in the first quarter. Still a nothing-nothing game, so the Eagles not in any kind of hole, at least scoring-wise. So let's see how they respond to this big blow, James Ramsey. Attempted to come back into the game. Now he's back in the locker room. So let's see how they respond to adversity. This is definitely adversity with a capital A here, Mark. They run it with Patchouli, and he could be gone. Williams, the only man who could catch him, or Mayer. And Williams does run him down at about the 10. So it looked like Pete Panici uh, may have been gone for a second. But the Eagles have enough speed to catch up to him. But the damage is done as it'll be first and goal for the Vikings. So anybody out there who thought that Upper Marion's 4-2 and two was built on a, a house of wind and smoke is sorely mistaken, and it's clear that they're more than capable of playing with this Eagles team. Well, that long run by Panici, there's nothing James Ramsey could have done about that. This defense needs to do their job with him out. They've got their backs against the wall here now with Upper Murray with the ball on the 10-yard line with 22 seconds here to go in the quarter. Motion for the Vikings. They hand it off to Panici, and he's met by the Eagles' defensive line. Good play by the Eagles' defense. Ah, the wicked Wilson Pickett. The sounds of the land of a thousand dances fill the air here at Roosevelt Field on homecoming. But what needs to happen? is a land of a thousand sacks because Norristown's defense is in a big time hole and Upper Marion is looking to punch it in as the first quarter ends. Teams will make the long trip down to the other 10 yard line. 
and uh, it'll be second and seven after a short gain by Panici. And the Eagles, as you said, in a very precarious position right now without Ramsey and uh, with the Vikings knocking on the door of a score. Still a nothing nothing game, but the Eagles definitely don't have some things that are going against them right now. What Ramsey being out does for the Eagles is limits their options. They've got to go to Mayer. They've got to go to Kelajor. But how do they get the ball to them? The fundamental, the fundamental problem that the Eagles have been having is an exchange problem from the, from the center to the quarterback. If they're not able to get the ball in the hands of the quarterback, then they're not going to be able to get the ball in the hands of Sheldon Mayer, and they're not going to be able to do anything. And this could be a very long homecoming. Sheldon Mayer looked decent on that first drive. Didn't bust off a long one, but kept getting four-yard gain after five-yard gain. and They're going to have to rely on him a lot now, but the problem is this Vikings defense is going to be expecting it because uh, Shannon Mayer right now is the quarterback for the Eagles. And However good and however athletic he is, he hasn't proven himself yet. And until he does, the Vikings are just going to key on the run because Sheldon Mayer is just so dangerous. Yeah, if I'm Upper Murray and I key on Sheldon every play. Speaking of uh, bad center quarterback exchanges, here's one by the Vikings. Mike Good thinks the Eagles have it. Let's see what the guys in the striped shirts The say. Eagles do. Big, big break. That's definitely enormous. And uh, we're talking about the struggles of the Eagles doing just that, snapping the ball from the center to the quarterback. And boom, just like that, the Eagles uh, are getting one in their favor. So... Uh, not good field position for the Eagles, but they'll most certainly take it as it takes a golden scoring opportunity away from Upper Marion. And now with 11.53 to go in the half, first and 10 for the Eagles from their own seven yard line. Mayor hands off to the other mayor and he's uh, carrying a couple guys. He gets himself a solid gain of about eight. That's what Mayer needed to do. He needed to be able to break it and he needed to be able to get them out of immediate danger. Sheldon Mayer does this, and if Shannon Mayer can get it to Sheldon Mayer and the offensive line can do a little bit of blocking, they should be in fairly decent shape if they continue Coach Smith's strategy from the first series of downs. It's going to get confusing with Shannon and Sheldon. I know. You can't even do it. S. Mayer. Here he is sneaking it, and uh, Shannon Mayer, that is, and let's see if he picked up the two yards they needed. It's just second down, so if he did not get it, not a big problem, but he did indeed get it. Coach E.J. Smith not taking too many chances with the young quarterback, making sure that these are high percentage plays that drive forward. I don't expect to see too many more pitches to Sheldon Mayer because that last one, they just allowed Upper Marion to tee off on him, and he got smacked around a little bit. So I expect to see more off-tackle plays and possibly even some dives to Williams and Kellajor, to two fullbacks. Here's Mayer under center. Gives it to Derek Williams, who is at the fullback position. He's able to get maybe two or three. And if I'm Coach E.J. Smith, I'm going with some short passes with Sheldon Mayer, if any at all, or Shannon Mayer, because he's young and uh, this is all new to him, and you have to get him comfortable, you have to get him in some kind of a rhythm before you go with those intermediate to long passes, if they plan on going to them at all. Yeah, a couple short completions can really get a young quarterback's confidence up, so allow him to get a couple, maybe a couple out in the flat to Roby, or even some of the hated plays that shall not be named, uh, just in order to get him some confidence, or a screen pass, better yet. Shannon Mayer under center, back to throw, and they do just that going short. But the Vikings were all over the short pass to Roby. And I know you don't like that play, even when it's to someone with the speed and athleticism of Roby. The problem with that play is that all of the planets have to be in alignment for it to work. You have to be single covered with no deep help. You have to be able to make the man miss. And the throw has to be such of such perfect quality. It has to be right there in a position to give the receiver room to run that that play almost never is successful, especially in high school football. It's a waste of time. But the Eagles did listen to us. They tried to throw it short. And now Mayer 
in a single back formation. Drops back to throw again. And he'll go down the field and it's picked off. No, it's dropped. That was number 22, Name Cheeseboro. And uh, he had one in his hands and it just fell. And now roughing the passer on the Vikings defense and the Eagles are gonna pick up a nice free 15 yards. The Eagles, once cursed by penalties, are now blessed by penalties. It has been a complete reversal of fortune here. The Eagles are, are routinely uh, smote with penalties week after week after week. But this week, a couple key penalties have sustained Eagles drives and allowed them to dig themselves out of holes. So that was an ugly throw by Mayer, but it would not have mattered even if it was picked off due to the roughing the passer call. And I'm, I continue to be surprised at how much they're passing the ball. It's one thing if they're shutting down Sheldon Mayer and they have to try something else. But they're not really, they're going with Shannon Mayer right now a lot. And uh, we're still early in this game. They, they should go to Sheldon Mayer more. They must have seen something in film with Upper Marion during some of the games when they've given up huge amounts of points that leads them to believe that they're going to be successful in the passing attack. There's a handoff to Mayer. He's met at the line of huge hit. That's number 58, Bill O'Donnell. And um, that'll bring up second and about 10. Smacked around. Just an unbelievable play. Perhaps that's why they continue to pass the ball. Perhaps that's why. Elementary, my dear Watson, it seems to be that they can't run. So here's Mayer, Shannon Mayer that is, under center with Sheldon Mayer in the backfield and Derek Williams also in the backfield. And they'll go to Mayer again to throw. Throws it down the field and it's through the hands of Derek Williams. It was nearly picked off as well, but um, I don't know. Mayer drops back a lot that play to avoid the pressure, and then he uh, heaves it down the field to no avail. He can't be dodging these bullets forever. He drops back and heaves it up there and prays for rain. He can't keep dodging them forever. He got lucky twice. What do they say? Third time's a charm, right? Well, we'll see. And it's just been a tremendous pass rush by the Vikings, and they're not making it any easier on Shannon Mayer. I mean, every time he's dropped back, he's had guys in his face, and no quarterback, I don't care if you're a senior and a pro player, whatever, no quarterback can get it done with that kind of pressure. Now he's got some time, throws it deep for Roby. Roby catches, and he's off to the races. Nobody's gonna catch him. Touchdown, Anthony Roby. No flags! That's unbelievable, nearly unprecedented. A Norristown touchdown that is uncontested by flags or acts of rain. This is unreal. And a big time touchdown from Shannon Mayer to Anthony Roby, who was not wide open, not the most aesthetically pleasing pass, but nonetheless effective. Boy, they continue to throw it with Shannon Mayer, and they're successful. A lot of credit to this Eagles coaching staff for trusting this freshman, and now they're rewarded. Ian Hammer, his extra point is good, and the long touchdown from Shannon Mayer to Ant Roby, and that's the Eagles. Seven points. It's 7 nothing Norristown. Wow. And what a, what a huge rush for this nearly capacity crowd at historic Roosevelt Field as they're cheering and dancing and rooting their heroes on and exhorting them to even greater heights of gridiron greatness. They're going crazy, literally crazy here in the stands. And we'll see if the Norristown Eagles defense can sustain that and maybe force a turnover and smash this Upper Marion Vikings team. I don't think anyone would be surprised if you told them that Mayer scored the Eagles' first touchdown. But I think they would be surprised if you told them it was Shannon Mayer. That's, that's very true. So uh, this crowd, the biggest we've seen perhaps this year on homecoming day. And the Eagles have the first lead of the game, 8.50 to go in the second quarter. And we've seen our first score, and it's 7-0. It's now on the steadfast hammer 
to get it down there and pin the Vikings deep. Hammer with a low line drive bouncing kick. It's fielded at about the 15. Oh! A shocking blast by number 34, Rob Lewis, who hurts, hurts his Viking opponent. The return gets the Eagles to the 25, and wow, that was quite a block by Rob Lewis. And um, the Vikings will set up shop at the 25. Fantavon will bring his offense back out onto the field, looking to respond. Drops the snap again. Let's see who regained it. No signal yet. There's still a big pileup out there. This is a big pileup. If the Eagles get it, this would be a big time. Doesn't look like it. Second down for Upper Marion. Nonetheless, no gain on the play, perhaps a loss of a yard. And uh, if the Vikings continue to struggle in this area, eventually good things will happen. They already have, but more good things will happen. They're going to turn the ball over if this keeps happening, and Norristown's going to score off of it. That's their, that's their power move. That's their bread and butter, is forcing these defensive uh, turnovers and then scoring on them, either through a short offensive drive or somebody like Mike Good or Sam Kellejo or even Sheldon Mayer running it in. Explosive junior Dexter Bridge came off the sidelines into the game. He's in the slot, but they hand it off, and they don't get anything. Norristown's defense says, bring that garbage around here, and we're going to throw it in the trash can. Now under eight minutes to go in the half. Third and ten. The Vikings with all the momentum against them right now and facing a third and ten. They're going to have a difficult time running against this stalwart Norristown defense. Norristown does not believe in allowing things to come easily for their opponents, even though sometimes they give up a lot of yards. Tonight they're being relatively parsimonious. High snap. Fantavon throws, and it's over everybody. Not a good throw, and it's fourth and ten, and the Vikings will likely punt. Upper Marion's got a punt here. A failed fourth down attempt for conversion is a dagger through their heart. So once again, it'll be Milo Hill back to return, and Dexter Bridge to punt. Apparently many people have parked their cars illegally tonight. Bridge facing some heat, kicks it straight up into the air, a terrible punt. And it takes a little Eagles bounce at the end. And the net on that punt, about 14. To call that a terrible punt is to do it credit. That, and <laughs> to add insult to injury, it took a generous Norristown bounce, putting them in wonderful field position. Now Mayer has confidence. Yes, that'll definitely be a key for him. And of course the Eagles, if they continue to go to the pass, that's gonna be huge. And uh, I questioned their going to the pass. As did I. But uh, Mayer, not really able to get it going. Uh, Sheldon that is. And then Shannon Mayer got the long pass, so obviously I was wrong. And they hand it off to the fullback for a gain of about five. I go right back to Shannon Mayer here. I go right back to the, the Mayer Roby connection. See what happens. Let's see if it. Uh, see if they can do it again. I mean, Roby's a junior, Mayer's a sophomore. This could be a great combination for a year and a half. Obviously, if James Ramsey's healthy, he's going to be the guy. But this is a senior year, and we're getting a glimpse at the future here with Shannon Mayer. Roby and Good to the near side. They hand it off to Derek Williams again from the fullback position, and he gets about three. Williams was a little tentative there, kind of not picking and exploding through the hole. What he's got to do is he's got to really make sure that when he gets that call and that dive play that he explodes through. So Mayer gets the play from the sideline, runs back to the huddle. Just over six minutes to go in the half. Seven-nothing Eagles. 
and they are 29 yards away from another touchdown. Shannon Mayer, the freshman, looked rattled at first, but now he's a hero getting that long pass to Roby. They roll him out. Let's see if he can complete it to Roby again. It's tipped away. There's a flag, though. And that will likely be defensive pass interference as it was thrown in the secondary. Mike Good was mistreated on that play, and it, 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 did, not look, it did not look good from here. Um, well, it looked good, as in good being Mike, but it didn't look clean or fair. So it'll be fourth down now, an interesting decision for the Eagles, but uh, this is probably outside of field goal range, and like you can't punt from here, so the obvious decision is to go for it on fourth and four. Hammer's range is, a, is almost 40 yards. Too far outside of that, even though he's got a heck of a leg, too far outside of 40 yards for any high school kicker is not going to happen. However, seeing what happens here should be interesting, and this really could prove whether or not Shannon Mayer's got the goods because this is a crucial series. And as we mentioned earlier, the uh, Vikings are 4-2, and two, but they are 0-2 oh when they allow more than 7 points. 4-0 oh when they allow 7 or less. So uh, here in the first half to get another score would be big if history is any kind of indicator. This will be huge, and Norristown benefits again from the penalty. First down, and Norristown has not, as Norristown teams in the past, let up when they've been ahead. They have been real pedal to the metal this year, and that's a credit to E.J. Smith and his coaching staff. Last year, they're letting teams back in games and losing some games as a result. This year, they are putting teams down and making them suffer. The pass interference got the Eagles the first down, so uh, there never was a fourth down. Here is Mayer to the outside. Sheldon to the five, and that's where he's brought down. Good run there by Sheldon Mayer, and now Norristown has a great opportunity to punch it in. A turnover here would be horrible, as turnovers often are, but a turnover here would be especially bad. Ball right on the five. They wind the clock, 5.37 and counting. Let's see if the Eagles can punch it in. Three in the backfield, including Sheldon Mayer and Derek Williams. They give it to Mayer, there's a flag. He will not get in, but uh, there's a flag anyway. We will check the marker, and it's going to back the Eagles up. So now the Eagles no longer, and uh, illegal, illegal motion. So Eagles are now at the 10, not the 5. And let's see what head coach E.J. Smith and staff draw up to try and get this one in from 10 yards out. So 5-12, here to go. Should be interesting, as you said, Mark. Once again, Douglas, Williams, and Mayer in the backfield. They go to Sheldon, and he spilled in the backfield. That's number 53, Greg Greenaway. We, we've already called his name several times today. You can see why he's a captain and considered a very solid linebacker. Yeah, Greenaway has been having a heck of a game, and that pushes the Eagles back, and now it's second down. So they want to think now, more now about passing, perhaps something quick over the middle or even hitting Roby out in the flat. Douglas and Battaglio come out of the game. They'll put some quicker players in there with Hill and Roby. Now a flag as the teams come up to the line. See what this is all about. A legal substitution on Upper Marion. So they give it up and then they get it back. And it's still second down. 
Second. Look at that formation for the Eagles. Second and goal, and they have three wide receivers near side in a line. They go to Roby. Oh, and he's hit hard by number 22, named Cheeseboro. So that's an interesting play that they drew up there, trying to get three wide receivers over there lined up and use some of them as blockers and let Roby try and make something happen in space. But it failed miserably. Anthony Roby's chiropractor probably isn't too happy with that play call. That was that was harsh. So now third down and goal. Ball on the upper Marion 12. So does Coach Smith run it here or well, what does he do? Does he try that short something short again to the far side, perhaps to Mike Good? I was just gonna say they've been trusting Shannon Mayer so far in all kinds of situations. And I think this third and goal from the 12 definitely calls for a pass. And they'll roll him out that he will look to pass. And it's through the arms of uh, a, the Norristown player and picked off. There is a flag, so we will see if this counts. Doesn't look like it. The Eagles may have caught a break as the pass went through the Norristown receiver's hands and was intercepted one yard deep into the end zone. Battaglia was the target. There's an illegal man downfield on the Eagles and that penalty will, that penalty will not stand and it is an interception. So both teams have turned the ball over deep into the red zone. And uh, it's still 7 nothing Eagles, but that's definitely a tough blow as they were so close to making it a two-score game and cracking this very tough Upper Marion defense that we talked about. Upper Marion really played huge there and did a great job down on the goal line picking off that Mayer pass. At first we thought it was a pass interference call because there was a little contact, but... Turns out that Good was relative was unencumbered, so. Fantavon, short pass to the running back, and he spilled after a gain of about one. There's that play again. CJ Douglas on the stop, and it'll bring up second and about seven. I blitz if I'm Norristown here. I, I do something shocking. Fantavon drops back, throws over the middle, and it's caught. That was number two, Vinny Giangiulo. So a good looking throw there by Alex Fantavon. And if he's got confidence, what quarterback isn't gonna make that completion? What quarterback doesn't do that over the middle? He's got his receiver wide open, poor coverage by the Eagles, but I've got, really got to question that call not to blitz some of those backers. Send Kelajur and send Good. Put Panthavong in a position where he's makes some mistakes. Norristown's defense has got to score. They've got to get turnovers. Shannon Mayer was under some heat earlier. We saw what pressure could do when they brought blitzes against him. But you're right, Panthavong had a lot of time there and unsurprising that he's able to complete the pass to Jean Gillo. If you give a quarterback that much time, who cares who it is? If it's, if it's a freshman quarterback or if it's a senior like uh, Fantavong for Upper Marion, any quarterback, regardless of seasoning, is going to make that completion if they have a big target over the middle and they don't get pressure in their face. Boy, how big of a momentum swing was that interception in the end zone as um, now Upper Marion is driving uh, and the Eagles, who could have been up 14-0, are now scrambling to prevent it from being 7-7. It's huge. It's huge. And Norristown's really got to come up big defensively because of the score here before halftime. Remember, Upper Marion gets that ball back on the kickoff, so they can really translate that momentum into some big-time points here. And this can swing in a hurry. For homecoming especially, you got to be aggressive. you got to come out, and you've got to get the crowd on your side. Right now, this crowd is too passive. So there will be a lot of pressure on this defense to try and prevent Upper Marion from driving and tying this game. It's a defense that has allowed 19.8 points per game. Here's Fantavon. Throws over the middle. Nearly picked off as it was deflected by Good. 
and a diving attempt after that by Dinolfi, and it falls harmlessly to the turf. Mike Good is a superior football player. He's everywhere at once, making great plays, scoring on defense as he did last week, able to score on offense too as a wide receiver, great coverage, and seems to have this intuitive sense for what's going to happen. Makes that big play in the first quarter for a big loss in the backfield on number 31, Panici, and Mike Good is just everywhere all at once. Van Devong under center, drops back, looking to throw. Here comes that pressure. Deep. Now there's too much pressure, and he completes it for a gain of zero. Looked like he wanted to go deep there, but uh, as he said, there was pressure. There was good coverage down the field, and the Eagles' defense got it done there. That was a great play by the defense, and especially Sam Kelajor to keep the play in front of him, and uh, 82 C.J. Douglas to get some pressure. Good job by Douglas, and good job by Kelajor. And very good coverage all around by the Eagles because there was nothing. Fanthavong didn't have the time to get comfortable, didn't have the time to set up. Looked like he wanted to roll out to the left, but couldn't make it happen. Third and ten. Fanthavong drops back to throw once again. Goes to the sideline, and it's not a good throw intended for Dexter Bridge as he was running towards the sideline, and the pass was thrown where he was, not where he was going. So now let's see if the, and yes, the Upper Marion Vikings will indeed punt, as expected. And the Eagles defense does its job. And uh, let's see if the offense could get their momentum back that it, they lost on the interception. It'd be great for the Eagles here if Milo Hill can make something big happen on a return. He always has the potential to. He's got a lot of speed and very elusive. But um, the Eagles have got to give him some blocking. Unless, of course, they go for the punt block here. Dexter Bridge gets it off. It's a high punt. Milo Hill boots it. And now there's a pile up. Milo Hill muffed the punt, probably should have just backed off and let it go, and now there's a pile up, and it's anybody's guess whose ball it is. A crucial mistake by Milo Hill. Let's see if the Eagles are able to dodge a bullet by regaining it. This is going to be a big call in this game. The Eagles do have it, but Milo Hill is going to hear about that from the coaches. That was... That was not wise. And he has not been the punt returner all season. And uh, if he continues playing like that, he's not going to be it for any long periods of time. That was, and that was a very unwise play. You've got to stay away from that and not let it hit anyone. I don't know why. I don't know why you go near that. So Mayor Sheldon Mayer in the slot. Derek Williams is the lone setback. Shannon Mayer under center. Hands it off. Here's Derek Williams bouncing it to the outside. Now bouncing it further outside. Gets by a man. And he's spilled, but he has about an 11-yard gain and a first down. That's not Williams' normal game. Williams is normally the bruiser up inside, three, four yards in a cloud of dust. But that was a nice run, nice piece of running by 24 Derek Williams. Great vision to find the outside running lane. First and ten, Eagles. Eagles have got to hurry up here. Just a minute left now in the half. They go to Sheldon Marin. Tripped up trying to hurdle a defender. We're now inside of 50 seconds to go in the half. And if the Eagles want points, they have to hurry, which they do. Second down. Ball at their own 43-yard line. Mayer gives it off to the fullback, and it's Kelliger. Breaking tackles now going to the outside. Makes another man miss, but he's spilled after picking up what will be very close to a first down. That was an impressive run by Sam Kelajor. Picked up about six yards on that, but more importantly, he didn't lose the big time yard as he, he looked to lose there. Sam Kelajor has got great vision, and he's, even though he's known for more his straight away, straight ahead sprinter speed, he still has good vision and is able to break some tackles. The Eagles took a timeout moments ago to stop the clock at 27 seconds. Well, there was that huge connection from uh, Mayer to Roby earlier, so maybe they're looking to replicate that. I've run it down. I run the clock down, maybe do another running play or a pass over the middle, knock it down, and then go for a shot or two to the end zone if I pick up this first. So 
So the Eagles will come up to the line following their timeout. Still third, or it is third down as they did not pick up the first on that Kelger run. Four wide receivers. I don't pass here, I pick up this first. Third and very short. Mayer takes the snap, he's gonna throw. Goes deep, it's for Sheldon Mayer, and he dropped it. He beat the coverage as uh, falling down on the dive was number 41, James Brennan. But unfortunately, it went through Mayer's hand, hands as he Sheldon Mayer away. completely toasted his coverage on that one. He beat everybody by about five yards. Um, and that should have been another six for the Eagles. Good throw by Shannon Mayer, right on the money. A blown opportunity to be sure. And that's very rare for Sheldon Mayer. And that absolutely would have been six if they completed that mayor to mayor connection. But they do not, so it's fourth and inches. Mayor under center, mayor in the backfield. Shannon sneaks it. He's got it. And he'll fight ahead for a couple more. And let's see if the Eagles take another timeout. That was the manliest quarterback sneak I've ever seen. He chugged over about three guys and kept churning his legs, bowling them over like nine pins. We've seen him pick up two first downs now on quarterback sneaks, so he's been good there. And it's a first down, and the Eagles take a timeout with 16 seconds left. So now let's see if they try to hit a home run here with a deep pass or if they try to get out of bounds and set up a shorter pass or perhaps an Ian Hammer field goal. Let's see what they go with. I, I try, if I'm, the, if I'm the Eagles here, I try for the deep ball. I try for the home run. That's a backbreaker before halftime, and that really can uh, make sure that your opponents are going to have a real tough time uh, coming back. Shannon's shown that he's got an arm. He's got a gun. He can get it downfield. So I give him the opportunity to do that here. We've already seen it once, as you said. And if it's picked off um, on a deep throw, no real harm done, as there's not enough time left for Upper Marion to make anything of it. So I agree with you. Take a shot downfield. Try and put this one in. Low risk, high reward at this point. Here's Mayer dropping back. Steps up into the pocket. He'll run with it. Got some speed. He picks up the first down and a lot more. And he's all the way down to the 24. And the Eagles. That kid can run. He's got some speed. Are we in field goal range for Ian Hammer? This puts it at about 36. You said his range was 40, and their range is about 40. And he kicks him at 40. Hammer's got a boot. What do you do here if you're Coach E.J. Smith, Mark? Well, they're right around that 40 that you said, right in that neighborhood. Um, I mean, it's a very tough call. Let's see what they go with. They're going to bring out Hammer. They're bringing out Hammer. It's hammer time. So Ian Hammer will try to give the Eagles a two-score lead before halftime. Camera person Samantha Pitkin, a MC Hammer enthusiast, clearly picking up on that one. Um, but here's, here's Ian Hammer, the left-footed bootsman who's going to look to put the Eagles up. A penalty. Well, if it's on the Eagles, it puts them out of field goal range. If it's on the Vikings, it puts them in better field goal range. So this is a pivotal call. It's on the Vikings. Apparently some sort of swimming infraction. <laughs> they have failed to properly train their dolphins. So <laughs> this is a penalty. Anthony Dinolfi, the holder with the hold. Hammer's kick is short. Just short. So Hammer just misses it. Shannon Mayer's uh, nice scramble uh, just moments ago. Then the Eagles took their third and final timeout, but they cannot capitalize on that. And they'll go to halftime, and it's a low-scoring affair here on homecoming night at Roosevelt Field. 7 to nothing, Eagles. We'll be right back with the homecoming festivities. Don't you go changing, sports fans. 